I thought it'd be interesting to build a state machine that has a hundred states and drives a couple of seven segment displays. Now this state machine is obviously too complex to be built with any sort of standard combinatorial logic flip-flops and whatnot. So this is just another example of how powerful you can build a state machine using non-volatile RAM or ROM. In this case it is uh, EE proms but any kind of flash memory or anything that um, is essentially non-volatile will work. This circuit is comprised of a clock chip which in this case we're just using our old friend the 555 timer. I've got it set up to produce a square wave at a 3.1 Hertz. This chip right here is a 273 8-bit D flip-flop latch and what this chip does is simply take 8 bits of input and um, hold it steady when it sees a clock signal into its clock input pin it will latch whatever's at its input and it will transfer it to its output and it will hold it stable until it sees the next uh, clock pulse come in and then it will do it again. Um, so between our uh, 3 Hertz here coming into this latch chip, this basically the the clock is only talking to this latch chip. It is, is latching uh, information every 3 seconds. I'll show you the schematic in a minute. Um, and then this chip right here, this EEPROM, I'm using only a very very tiny percentage of it. I'm only using 6 bits of address space. However, I am using the full 8 bits of output. So if you look at a non-volatile memory device as a, a multi-dimensional storage area, um, you have a dimension in the address space and you have a dimension in the data space. And typically these chips have um, 13, 14, 15 um, bits of address and, and typically only 8 bits of output. So sometimes you have to um, put them in parallel in order to get uh, the job done. What's happening here is that this this chip is running a 100 state round robin. So all I need is 100 memory locations out of this chip uh, and that turns out to be 64 hex. So I only need 7 address bits. So I'm using address bits A0 through A6 and I've grounded a7. Of course the address bits on this chip go up to much higher than that. This particular chip it goes up to A14. Um, so everything above A6, A7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 are all grounded. We're not using that. So we're only, only using a very small percentage of this memory. And what's happening is that um, we are reading, let's say we start out at address location 0, we read 0, the data at 0 says to go to 1. That latches into this chip, now it sees um, that memory location and it goes, when it gets there it says to go to 2, 3, 4, 5, and it just walks right up to um, address uh, hex 63 I believe it is, and then on 64 it says to go back to zero. So this is just a 100 state round robin here. That's all it does. Now the the data out of this chip is being fed back into this latch and then fed back into the address inputs of this chip. But the data out of this chip is also being fed. So what you see these big buses right here. It's also being fed to these two chips. Now there are some chips, I think um, uh, 74HC4511 I believe it is, that will decode um, BCD, a 4-bit uh, decimal number, into 7-segment display. And that could be useful in some cases, but in this case this is actually useful because we are not decoding a 4-bit um, number. What we're doing is we're decoding uh, where we are in this hundred um, unit sequence. 
So these two chips right here are just lookup tables that say this one repeats over and over and over every 10 um, units, every 10 steps it's repeating the same information 0 through 9. So at address location 0 where it wants to put out a 0 it just knows which segments to light up in order to output a zero. So it's nice because it's incredibly flexible. You can do anything with a lookup table like that. You can make it behave any way you want. At first I had these upper digits blinking off and on, but it was just uh, too distracting to look at it. Um, it's kind of a nice idea, but it didn't work in practice. So I made it uh, so that it would be steady. So these two, this is the lower um, segment uh, and it repeats over and over and over and then this is the higher segment that just obviously counts it only changes every 10 counts so here we have a system um, these chips are large and um, again we're only using uh, six um, A seven address lines A0 through A6 and uh, so there's a lot of capacity of these chips that isn't being used and um, and and they're large uh, you know you could get a 14 pin chip that would or 16 pin chip that would do a BCD to seven segment um, conversion but it's not the really the point of all this the point of this is to just demonstrate how flexible these systems can be with these uh, these non-volatile RAM lookup tables now here's the schematic and I'll be glad to send this schematic to you if you email me at the address that I show uh, at the end. Um, essentially we have our timer here which is our 555 chip producing 3.1 Hertz going into our latch. This is a um, 74HC or HCT273. It's a um, it's 8D flip-flops. It's uh, octal D flip-flop chip. Here I've just notated these as EE prom, just kind of generic. If you have a um, an electronic surplus um, store in your area, if you're lucky enough to be like us, we have here in Boise we have a a store called the Boise Reuseum where people can bring their old computers in and they try to recycle them or to um, resell them and do things with them rather than just have them become hazardous waste. It's a really fantastic place and they have a lot of programs that they work with kids and whatnot. And I was able to get um, a bunch of um, EE proms for uh, a dime a piece and which is really phenomenal. Now these are proms that are outdated and everything but who cares. Um, these proms are typically, uh, they have a standard um, pinout, especially when you have a certain package like these are 28 pin packages and um, as the capacity of the chip increases they convert some of the output enable and other types of uh, tri-state pins and whatnot into address bits. So even though these are outdated chips you know, you might be able to find um, um, a supply of them as well for very uh, inexpensive costs. So actually, um, I'm paying more for this little 8-pin um, 555 timer than I am for these big 28-pin uh, EE proms. Same thing for these 7-second displays. I picked these up at uh, Radio Shack at a premium price just because I needed some right away, but you could order them online for um, very little, you know, maybe uh, 99 cents or something like that. I think I paid three bucks a piece here, so I'm paying, you know, three dollars for this little seven segment display and ten cents for this 28 pin E prom. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but that's the way that's the way the world of electronics works. So this throughput here, you see, um, we have our latch and our, this is our state machine here. These three chips. So we have our latch that's taking the output of the data output of this uh, EE prom, bringing it back around here as the clock strikes, it, it, it latches that over to this side and then this changes and it just continues to walk up through all the memory locations because of the way this is programmed. Um, if you do request uh, this information, you might uh, need to also, I might need to generate some files that show you how I program these EE prompts because obviously um, that's the key to this whole thing. It's kind of 
uh, obvious in a way, but maybe if you're not familiar with how to do that, um, all this EEPROM has in it is, for instance, address location. The date at address location 0 says 1. The address at address 1, it says 2, and it just goes right up until I hit 0 to 99, or the 100th state, I go back to 0. Here we just have um, the segments that have been programmed in to, uh, to light up the correct segments. So when this sees um, uh, address location um, 0, if it's the lower one, it's basically going to put out a 0. If it's the upper one, it's going to put out a 0. But this one, the lower one, is going to put out um, um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, 1, 2, 3, and stuff like that. This one is going to be programmed so that it puts out the segments of a 0 for, um, you know, until we, we hit 10, and then it's going to output a 1, and then we hit 20, it's going to output a 2. So that's why these two have to be different. But it's just a very, very clean, simple, straightforward machine, and it does a lot to demonstrate the principles of... Um, of, of complex but simple uh, high order state machines. Here we have a hex dump of the state machine buffer and this just shows how simple and elegant uh, EEPROM based state machine can be. Um, just imagine trying to do this with uh, flip-flops and combinatorial logic it would just get completely out of hand really quickly. So this is a hundred states here. So we have our address here um, starting uh, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and at 0 we say uh, the data at address location 0 is a 1 which means that's the next address. So then as it latches into the latch chip it's going to go to this location then it says okay go to 2 and then the next time it's going to go to 2 it says go to 3 and we just walk all the way up here until we get up to our um, hex 64. Now these are 16 bytes, so if we multiply 16 by 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, um, we have 80. Uh, this is, um, here we have 80 bytes, and then another um, 16, we have uh, 96 and then 97, 98, 99, and here's our hundredth one. This is actually data. This is all just fill that I put in. And the reason I put this fill in is because if, uh, usually it fills to FF, but if the chip were to come up in a, in a particular state where it was not at address location zero, let's say that it was up at address location 100 hex, if it saw an FF, it would basically be telling it jump to address FF. Well, I don't want that. So the whole rest of the chip is filled with zeros, and if it ever does happen to come up someplace other than address location zero, uh, maybe a capacitor is retaining a charge or something like that, and, and, it's, and it's reading an old address, it will still jump back to location zero and will be off to the races. So this is just the, um, the little buffer that I have created by hand, very simply just typing in uh, for every location, typing in the next location until we get up here to the hundredth location, I'm telling to go back to the zeroth location. And here's the seven segment display decoding table. We have our elements A, B, C, D, E, F, and G our seven elements in the uh, in the display module I have put my um, I put them in order such that A is at the lowest significant bit and G is the highest significant bit which um, made it a little bit strange to uh, actually look at the uh, the segment and try to figure out which um, which subsegments we're going to be on but um, but anyway once it's done it's done so what I've done here is I have um, translated uh, the digit into the hex output that would uh, light the proper segments of the display. And you notice that since it's a seven segment display, D7 or the eighth bit is not used at all. Now this, uh, this chart, these 
are programmed into the EE proms that produce the uh, the output. But uh, as I said earlier, the lower um, EE prom steps through these sequentially over and over and over uh, ten times, and the upper one um, holds on to each one of these outputs for ten cycles. You will need to have some sort of EE prom programmer. Um, this one programs many, many devices, hundreds of devices, including flash memory and everything else. Um, so uh, that's the only drawback to this approach is you do need to have some sort of machine that you can use to program the uh, non-volatile memory.